salvation. Father in heaven, creator of all things, we thank you this morning for the blessing of the good rain. We thank you for our well-being. We ask now that you would lead this committee and pray that your Holy Spirit would lead us. In we ask now that you would bless each of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Councilman Garvin. Thank you. Thank you. Kara Callenlott. Ahani. Bill England. Bill John Baker. Here. Harley Bezer. Here. Joe Crittenden. Here. Jody Fishinghawk. Janelle Fulbright. Don Garvin. Okay. Hannah Glory Jordan. Present. David Thornton. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, we have just on the agenda is the, the legislation to review. But at this time, since it's been several months since we've met, um, if at all possible, could we go ahead and start, if the committee concurs, we'll start with CNE so that Ms. Olaya can uh, go about her day, and we'll, we'll go ahead and begin with you, Gina. And in front of you, you should have a black and red document which provides updates from Brent Thompson, the head of HR at CNE, um, and then I don't know if you'll have questions for Gina or not to answer, but he provided those updates and we sent them out by email. And then it has the recruiting schedule for uh, Cherokee and Native American preference. I had an opportunity to review these prior and I emailed my questions directly to Brent. Uh, so I didn't know if anybody else had had an opportunity to review them and had any questions. Ms. Elias, is, is there anything you wanted to highlight to us about CNE's efforts or no, I tariffs? I haven't provided any direction. Um, I believe that there will be representatives at both rules and ENF at the end of the month. Okay. And if the issue comes back up on the agenda, we will discuss it. So, did anyone have any questions again about CNE's update or uh, the plan for recruitment as we expand on the casinos at Catoosa and West Silo? Madam Chair, yeah. just a comment. I did see where he talked about uh, recruiting for the Catoosa Casino. And he gave, I think it was 5.2% of the citizen population in Tulsa County, but what is it in, Ro in Rogers County? For you Indian know? population, uh -huh. yeah, I think it runs like about, according to the census, it's about 13%, 13 okay. or 14% across uh -huh. the county, and it varies by community from there. Um, tribal population is over 13,000 registered tribal citizens of all ages. Okay, thank you. Just a comment while everybody's reading is that there was a few of us that did have a meeting with Chief Smith uh, concerning tarot, and I think the issues that we had, and I need feedback, the issues that we had with tarot uh, with concerning CNE, at least for Indian preference and hiring and such, seem to be addressed in this report. Back to is that because I'm trying to remember the. Bill John, you were there, and I think Buell was there, and I don't remember, was there another person? It was just us three. So do you think we had a chance to review it, um, or no, it's premature? Okay. There, Madam yes. Chair, there was one question I had, and, then, and it's on the second page, and it talked about the 75% Native American employment. Was that a policy? call to make that 75% by year 2010? Or is that just discussion? The bottom of the page. Mm -hmm. I think that's the clarification because when we get to the actual draft of the legislation, there are some mandates okay. that um, are to be considered for a vote. But I don't know that we've, I don't remember setting those in the amended like we never amended it for the tarot legislation and I have concerns about doing it so we need to as a committee we need to, to discuss that at length 
how we would do that because the way the tariff legislation reads is not only would we be mandating it for a specific entity or our own entities, but if we mandated that for all tarot entities, I think we would have a mass abandonment of tarot. And I don't know that that's what we would want to do. So we need to discuss that as a group and deliberate on it before any action is taken. Madam Chairman, is it the uh, wish of the uh, committee to proceed on with our section-by-section uh, section, uh, uh, amendments or proposed amendments to the, the legislation? Uh, most of them have been incorporated in with the, uh, uh, with, with the uh, act that you have in front of you, but uh, we can... Is this the committee date 31008? Yes. Okay. But there have been a revision since then. I mean, that's, yeah, but that's... We can't put out of a courtesy to the different entities that we invited. I'd like to go ahead and have them kind of report before okay. we deliberate too much. Okay. Is everybody comfortable that, that uh, we ask, we're complete with Gina Olaya and c &E for now and that she can go on about her day or do we need her to stay? Thank you very much, Gina. Thank you. We appreciate it. It's good to see you. Good to see you all too. Have a good day. Okay, so Taros here, C and I and C and B have not come, but they are. They do have what was submitted last time in January and such. So you have those memos. There was no update from CNB and none from CNI. That's what I understand. And if you want to go ahead and come forward, Mr. Overacker. And have you had a chance to review CNB and CNI's input on the tarot? I read CNI's. I believe that came from uh, Brian Collins. Mm -hmm. Yes, I don't remember exactly what it said, but something or the fact that all, all CNI entities should be tarot certified and all business should be done with CNI for the check. It should be mandated. That's the part I remember of that. So. Okay. Well, I think was Council uh, and Hembry left the room. Oh. Mr. Hembry, was Councilman Thornton's suggestions included in this 31008 draft? Yes. Okay. So if the committee would pick up the 31008 Act, that you should have a copy in front of you. I would suggest that we go through this with John, uh, section by section. And I know we have four committee members not present today, and so if, if you talk to them after this, I'd appreciate if you'd update them because we need to either take action, take up tarot amendments, or decide as a group not to go forward with stuff so that this issue is resolved, at least for now. Do you want to start from the beginning? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Hembry, uh, would you like to join John? And, or you can stay seated either, okay. too. Um, please, the committee, I'd rather just stay seated here. Yeah, That's great. Yeah. Well, why yes, Council would let John sit down too. I mean, this is going to be a long. You're fine. Process. You want to join us up here, so, so we yeah, can. Yeah, I got close. I don't hear very well. Okay. Um, I, we don't buy John. I don't hear that in one ear, guys. That's why I sort of when I start talking, I want to make this. You and Buell. Well, if we uh, if the page the chair person, you want me to just go start section one, section two. Section that would be two? great. Okay. Well, if we all look at uh, section one. Uh, front page title and publication that's uh, 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 just boilerplate language title 40 that's where it had been codified 
Section 2, legislative history, again, nothing uh, specific here. We've just uh, uh, listed the, uh, the previous uh, tarot acts in their, in their amendment. Uh, section 3, uh, purpose. Uh, the purpose of this title is to encourage employment of Indians to assist in and require the fair employment of Indians and prevent the discrimination against Indians in the employment practices of employers who are doing business with the Cherokee Nation or in Indian country. Uh, so the, uh, it's a broad purpose and I wouldn't recommend any changes in that. Section 4 definition. Mr. Hamburg? Yes. And uh, I know uh, we have at least one other attorney in the room, so I need clarification on this because it seems that the will of this committee has been that we do include the tribe itself or tribal entities, um, and we have not taken a vote on that, and I don't know that I will vote to support that because when we met with the chief, there was information provided back that people do have recourse. And I think part of it is is maybe this public document should strengthen that recourse by restating it here. Would that be appropriate? Like if they have constitutional provisions that protect them as a tribal employee, that we restate that constitutional provision so that it's not that tarot is ignoring our government or its entities. And, and it, this may not make sense at this point. This is after I reviewed the whole legislation. Um, or if there's the appeals process for the government or its entities that we restate that here as well since people may not get past the purpose when they read this. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I guess what uh, this subcommittee needs to do is, is to decide what they're going to you know, bring forward to, the, to, the, to the, the full committee. And obviously it can obviously change in the, in the full committee. Um, and I mean, and, and that's you know, it, it, you know, the legislation, you know, splits right there. I mean, that that's that's a big decision whether you're going to make the Cherokee Nation uh, defined as an employer under tarot or not. So I would recommend, since we're you know, before we we uh, change with the uh, language with, uh, <coughs> under the purpose uh, section, uh, that we go to definitions and and let's decide the uh, the definition of employer. That's, that's G down there. Um, uh, right now, um, in the draft, it, uh, it, uh, the Cherokee Nation, the employer includes the Cherokee Nation, CNE, CNI, or any other Cherokee entity issuing contracts. It also includes all entities and nonprofit organizations receiving more than 50% of its funds from the Cherokee Nation for its entities determined for excludes federal governments so I would, I would say you know you know that, that this is that's the big crux in the act so we need to determine that one way or the other uh, whether you know uh, Cherokee Nation is a, an employer or not and obviously that's a policy decision that uh, that you counselors need to make so can I hear from the body uh, including John you're sitting at the table with us so um, the advantages and disadvantages and what kind of doors that opens up uh, from a sovereignty perspective as a tribal government and those kind of things. Is it necessary or not? Because the feedback outside of this room has been the fr ongoing frustration with Indian preference and contracting and employment. And I think these are some fundamental issues that we as a body need to vote on and deal with together. So, Councilwoman. I thought when we started, from the very first day, I, I thought this was to include Cherokee Nation and all of its entities. I mean, why have this if we're not going to include the biggest employer of all? Uh, who would it apply to? Then just the little mom and pop operations? And, and correct me, John and, and Todd, but under the current law, it does not explicitly, it excludes the tribal government and its entities. Correct. It, it's only for tarot vendors right now. And I thought that was the big change that we were going to make, was move it into the Cherokee Nation arena. Uh, maybe I've misunderstood all along then, because I thought that was the, the very first thing that we decided from the first day. 
who, who, who is not wanting to include it outside this room that you've talked to? I mean, the, the, the entities themselves, and I think you'll find that in their reports and stuff, have concerns about being included. And part of that is the legal implications in how the grievances are opened up and the fines that we would be fining ourselves. And so it also it opens itself up to lawsuits for those entities and the, and the tribal government. Well, if we don't apply it to ourselves, why are we forcing it on our, our small vendors? I, I mean, I don't understand. If, if, if it's not good enough for us to apply it to ourselves, then why are we making the mom and pop vendors do it? I guess it's a question back to a question, but it just doesn't make any sense to me. Either we write it to apply it to ourselves and we all learn to live with it. I mean, selective, selective application just doesn't, I'm just not for that. I just, uh, our biggest entities are the CNE, CMB, CNI, and if we're not going to apply it to them, then we're, I, to me, we're wasting our time. They're the biggest employers. They're the ones. It, it needs to be applied to them. Now, that's just. I just don't see a disadvantage to doing it because if we do our business right, we don't have to worry about lawsuits. And if we were sued, I'm assuming we all have in, liability insurance. So the entities do. So I, I, I'm just. I'm failing to see why we would want to take them out other than they don't want to be in. Well, that's tough. I mean, if this law is going to have any teeth, it's going to have to apply to everybody. And we're going to have to give John the ability to do some enforcement instead of just saying, please don't do that again. We've got to make them all act right. Well, I think it needs to apply to everybody. Um, before we hear from John on this, from the tribal perspective, uh, Harley, because you did a lot of procurement as the roads program and stuff, do you have any take from being an employee and from part of the administration on why this would be a problem? No, I, I tend to agree with uh, Ms. Jordan, you know, that I didn't see the thing a problem with being in the roads program. Now, there are certain laws within the roads program that, that give us a liberty to bid that to non tariff vendors because it's actually in the law. And I can't quote you the law or the place right now, but I can find it. Where it does say that uh, that we didn't have to, we give it to the best, what does it say? The best and most comprehensive bid out there. It doesn't say that you have to even let uh, tarot vendors bid on the thing. So what we did is bid it, let everybody bid on the thing. So that was a law that protects us in the roads program. Now there's certain laws that, that says you have to bid to Indian-owned firm, which is in, I believe, Section 3 or something like that, because we had to do that as a waterline project. The road program is a little bit different, because those are funds out of the Federal Highway Administration, and, and those are a little bit different than, than the rest of the Cherokee Nation. So, I didn't see a problem in the road program. So, just to make sure I understood, so if we change it to include the tribal government in our tribally-owned entity, it would need to have an exception for certain federal programs that would preclude preference. Yes, it could. You can put that in there. Now, there are certain government programs that you have to get it to end in own firms if certain dollars are used. Okay. I had asked for John to, to talk next, but maybe he's not ready, and then I saw Councilman Baker and Councilman Fishing Hawks. Councilman Fishing Hawks. Okay. Uh, G, which is right where we're talking already has that exclusion in it and uh, I mean it pretty much says that Cherokee Nation, Cherokee Nation Enterprises, uh, Cherokee Nation Industries or any other Cherokee Nation entity issuing contracts. It also includes all entities, non-profit or uh, profits, organizations serving more than 50 percent of its, uh, receiving more than 50 percent of its funds from the Cherokee Nation. Uh, it says entities, the term employer excludes federal, state, county government agencies, but includes contractors and subcontractors of all other agencies. So, I mean, if we're doing a federal road pro program, this is going to cover it, that uh, the federal law is going to supersede Cherokee law in that particular program where they're furnishing the money. And then it's going to supersede and, and, give, and give money to the county government to do their road programs and, and those sorts of things. So, you know, I'm okay with G, and uh, 
proposed amendment are you making a motion? I would move that we accept the proposed amendment on G. I second that. So I had a second, I think a fishing hawk beat out Thornton on the second. <laughs> To accept the underlying, the strict, the portion that's stricken and the underlying portion as an amendment to section G. Is there any comment? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Okay, that motion passed unanimously. Um, with that motion, Mr. Hembry, I just instruct you that when we get to a draft or, or copy to go to executive and finance, that or would this go to rules first? Uh, executive finance. Company. Okay, so it would be the yeah committee of jurisdiction. So in the purpose that if there's other stuff like the constitution that protects an employee or the appeals that we go ahead and note that in the purpose so that it doesn't seem like we're leaving those out mm -hmm. and that we would change that purpose to include appropriately by definition G. Okay, I had councilwoman fishing hall. I was just going to say the same thing Bill Jones did about Part D. It was already taken care of. Okay, thank you. Did I see another council person over here raise hands? If not, Mr. Overrecker, did you have any comment? No, ma'am. Okay. On, um, we then were, I guess, start to definition A. We're going to go back up. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. Um, we have been through uh, these definitions um, in, in previous meetings. Um, it, uh, uh, the administration of the executive branch, Cherokee Nation countries, our jurisdiction, uh, uh, Cherokee uh, Nation government uh, is a very uh, broad definition. Uh, core crew, uh, core crew. Is, there's no change in the definition that's in the, in the current um, Tarot Act and. And John, would you uh, have any problem with uh, the core cr crew definition <coughs> being there? No, the core, it's fine. The core crew is fine, just like we enforce right now. Okay. Uh, council is a council, EEOC. Um, council. Yes. Before we move on, on core crew, I had a note. Um, should we limit the core crew by size of the company? I, I, it, it really depends, I mean, because you're going to look at the things that we do, the vast amount of business that the Cherokee Nation does and the entity, okay. there may be, if you limit it to four, you may have businesses that need the actual five or six, whether it be a fire alarm company or a just different companies, for example, that may have to have the six key employees there. Do you ever see an appearance of abuse of the core, core crew? Normally, we've had a few issues with it uh, at, at Salem Springs, West Salem Springs. And we worked through that to explain to the contractors how this works, uh, put a stop to it, and they, that's why they call our office before they hire anyone yet, uh, who is a non native worker. So. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Murray. I'm just, I, I, hold on. I'm a little confused. Uh, clarify what you mean by limit core crew. Like by size of the company, like if there were a ratio? Like if you have 10 people in a company um, and you're TARO certified, maybe you should only have five core crew that could potentially be non-Indian. Or, you know, if you had 50, would that be 10? I don't know what that would be. I'm just throwing out an example. Or if you had a company of 100, I would hope that you don't show up with 75 core me crew members that are non-Indian and you're TARO certified. Okay. But so it, right it's now, uh, oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I was just trying to interrupt. But it just sounds like he doesn't have an issue with that, and that's all I was going to say to answer your question. Right now, the way it reads, they have to report anyone that has worked for them for one year continuously. Correct. And whether they're Indian or non-Indian. Correct. Um, what we have, we have a, a spreadsheet that has the name, last four digits of the social security number, uh, whether or not they're a, tri a tribal member, some tribe. And then we have them produce copies. If they say mark yes, they are a tribal member, they have to produce copy of their cards. So then shall we check that off? Okay. Councilwoman Fishing Hall. John, I maybe look this long and tell me if I am. If we're requiring seventy percent employment by X year, by the year two thousand and whatever, shouldn't the core crew list try to be that much by X number a year too? Not necessarily, because if you're looking at 
let's say for example, Mac, uh, Macintosh Plumbing right now in Catoosa, there's going to be 60 plumbers on site. Mm -hmm. um, on their core crew, they may have 20 plumbers, and they may only be able to bring 10, and we're going to have to go find the other 40 or whatever, or the other 30 to match up with that. But we, they don't know which 10 they're going to send. A lot of these companies that are, that are doing the big, the big jobs, um, they're doing 7 to 10 jobs at once. So we may have their core crew, this may be every one of their employees, which are plumbers right now, which are vital if you're a plumbing business. Each plumber you have that is licensed is, is vital to your company. Now, the apprentices, not as much. Laborers, not at all. They're not vital to them at all. How much leave time do we give them? Like if they've got a contract coming up, like you're talking about plumbing contracts, from the time they get that contract to the time they start work, how much time do they have to find Indian plumbers, Cherokee plumbers? Um, anywhere, sometimes a month, maybe a week, it just depends. But right now, for the, the plumbing may be in a bad example because we have to work with the plumbers union in, in Tulsa. Uh, well, I mean, Indian you know, they guaranteed plumbers. me that they were sending all their, their Indians first, which they did, which was really good. Uh, it just depends. I mean, it can be, if it's a big project, it can be a month. If it's a small project around here, they're, they're, the housing, it may be two weeks. It may be a week. It just depends what department who is coming from, the time frame, and what they have to actually start the project. Well, the more time they got, the more Indians I expect to see on that job. You know? Okay. Did you have any other questions? Okay. Please proceed. Mr. Okay. Um, e is the council. F is EEOC. We just dealt with with G. Lawyer. I have one question on G. Yes. On the part where it includes contractors and subcontractors of all other agencies, does this mean that even if they're not TARO certified, that they would be included if they were subcontracting or contracting to a TARO entity? And then the last sentence: the term employer yeah. excludes federal, state, and county government agencies but includes contractors and subcontractors of all other agencies. Um, now, what was your question again? So, so does, the way I interpret that is, is if you do any business with the Cherokee Nation, then you would, you would have to, even if you're not Tara certified, you would have to comply with this law. Yes, the way I would interpret it. Okay. okay. Just wanted to yeah. put that on the record. Okay. And that's under the current law yeah, already. Yeah, that's, that's not a change. Okay. Yes, Councilman Fisher. I want to bring this up. Sitting next to me is Miss Tina, huh. and she owns a bridge company. No, no, I yeah. don't. My no. husband. Your, her husband owns yeah. a bridge company. And in Cherokee County and Adair County, believe it or not, we've managed to find 13 of the 14 employees are Cherokee. And if we have mm -hmm. managed to find that much in Adair and Cherokee County, West Siloam is not that far away. And I just want to bring that point up. Um, and the I only, only non-Indian is a son-in-law. <laughs> I mean, you got to use your Understood. family. <laughs> we, we have, out of my office, um, if any of you have sent anybody to my office, you know we have sent them to Siloam. Uh, approximately since January 1, 40 to 45 employees up there to Siloam out of my office. So it, if you, I was sitting in the community meeting the other night in Kansas, and basically asked if anyone needed a job to call me and I would find them a job within two days. I mean, that's, that's our goal is to find them a job the next day if possible, two days at the most. Um, out of the 40 we have, there's probably 15 still there. So, you know, we, we do try to find people jobs as, as fast as we can get them. Can I put that in the inspector this way? Yeah, but if you want more details, though, I mean, I'd really give you the exact numbers instead of just something I'm pulling out of oh, my Oh, no, head. what I'm saying is I'm going to put in the paper to call you if you're needing a job and you're in a yes. county and you're unemployed. And would you put in there, too, that they can also work at Catoosa? Yes. Because that's, that's the biggest place we have. I, I have emailed this morning where I need five people in Catoosa, and I cannot find anyone who wants to go to Catoosa. John, just a point of clarification. Is it you that they call, or is it the job bank people locally at their career services mm -hmm. office? We, we are the job bank. They're okay. the job bank. We work with Nettie Deathridge, MJ, most of you know her, some of you know her. Uh, she actually maintains a job bank. And my office, anyone who walks in the door, they we're all going to find them a job. Okay. That's just how, that's, that's what I said, and that's what my staff tries to do. Okay. So. You know, where we've had better luck, or where my husband's company has had better luck, is we 
they go to Adair County and they try to employ people there in that county. They don't ask them to come to the job site. They go out and look for them. And sometimes that's the way you've got to do it is you've got to go out and look for them, get them on a job, and a lot of them are unskilled labor. You train them, and then you say, okay, the next bridge might be in Podoc, wherever. And you get them to go with you. But you can't, you can't expect them, if you're on a job in Oklahoma City, still well, people are not going to drive to Oklahoma City to apply for the job. But if you go down there and get them, and then you bring them to the job, They'll stay, they'll stay hooked with you. A, a lot of times it, we have these job fairs at Catoosa, and we think we're going to draw from Adair County. That's not going to happen. But if you take that job fair to Adair County, you might be surprised at the number of people you might get interested in a job. <coughs> Councilwoman, if I heard you, are you suggesting then that the job bank needs to have job fairs to recruit individuals throughout the 14 counties? Is that what I'm I saying? think they do. I think one of the biggest things that we're missing is we only conduct our job fairs where the job is at. We need to take the job fair to where the people are at and then bring the people back to the job. And that might even involve helping them with housing, and some other things that go along with keeping them at a job. When, when we take people, for example, if we take them from Adair County and we're going to take them to Oklahoma City, we're going to have to provide them a per diem so that they can, you know, obtain a motel room and that they have food to eat uh, so that you can keep them there near the job for at least the length of the job. If you expect them to drive from Stillwell to Oklahoma City, that's not going to happen, folks. But if they can go on Monday morning to stay till Friday evening and you're helping them with their room and their uh, their food, they'll stay and they'll stay hooked and they'll help you. I mean, that's just what we found. I, I think the job fairs are going to have to go to the people, though. Uh, you keep We keep holding them at the job site. And that's not attracting, but around Tulsa, and I think that was mentioned in one of these reports, and it's a lower uh, percentage of Cherokees. But if we take that job fair out to the counties where the people are located that need jobs, we can probably entice them then to come to Catoosa if we explain to them the opportunities that are there. It, before you go, Councilman Buzzard, John, is that something that you think your office could pursue? Yeah, and we could do the job fairs, but my office, we, we look at the community meetings. Uh, we, we try to attend every community meeting you guys that the council members have to make sure that one we get up there and we're speaking about you know a job here I know we've been to Jay we've been to Kansas, Kansas. I've been to Oaks to we went to Peavine uh, Dale Gibson was there I mean, and we try to do community meetings as well too to recruit because those are where your your constituents are at so that's where we go your tribal members are so uh, and I will speak with Diane uh, at Melanie Dodge about doing job fairs in these areas. I, I did have a job fair at Salisaw. Uh, Terrell did attend with that with Career Services. Um, so, you know, my office, is, we're, we're trying to get out there more. Everywhere I go, I always ask people for jobs. Whoever wants to work. So. Thank you, Councilman Buzzer. I, I think uh, John just kind of spoke to what I was going to say, and I was just going to say what uh, Ms. Jordan was saying. That <clears throat> you know, uh, in, in Delaware County, especially at West Salem Springs, you know, it's located, you know, to the border uh, states of Oklahoma, and we're getting a lot of people from Arkansas that goes to apply, which is good, you know, if we can get some uh, Cherokee people or some Indian people from Arkansas, that's fine, too. I know I want to uh, just say, commend uh, John for what he's done, because we've had a job at community meeting in Jay Oaks and then also in Kansas, and and we just don't get that many uh, younger folks out looking for work at those community meetings. And I, I don't know how to do it any better. You know? Bill, John, and Tyna might have had better luck with their community meetings, but we just don't get that many young folks out there that are looking for jobs. And I don't know how else to get them out there other than... You know, I'm going to run the same ad that Jody's got in the paper, John, and turn it over at County. That's all right, too. Yeah. Um, I, I really... Um, <coughs> you know, Salem's winding down. Uh, so we're looking at jobs that are, you know, they're going to open their casino in November, you know, then, and then the, there will probably be a, a pause, and I can't tell you the exact schedule before they start the hotel. So Catoosa, there'll be a longer time period right now for for a job. So. Okay. 
Or any more questions in this area, or would you, Mr. Hambury? I'll proceed. And uh, let's see, we are we're past G, and Indian uh, shall mean any person who is a member of a federally recognized Indian tribe, and or any person recognized by the Indian as an Indian by the United States of China to the trust responsibilities of uh, American Indians. That's uh, J, uh, K, and our uh, uh, standard definitions that, that have already been in. Uh, Indian-owned economic enterprise shall mean any Indian-owned commercial industrial business activity established or organized for the purpose of profit, provided that <coughs> such Indian ownership shall not shall constitute not less than 51% of the enterprise, and the ownership shall encompass active operations and control of the enterprise. That's again another standard definition. I wouldn't think we'd want to change anything on that. Obviously, you don't want to lower it. You don't want to increase it. Um, Indian tribe is a standard uh, definition. Uh, an employer is located in or on the Cherokee Nation if during any portion of a business enterprise or spe a, a specific project, uh, contract or subcontract, the employer maintains a temporary permanent office or facility uh, on or performs work on Cherokee Nation Indian country. Um, Mr. Embry? Yes. Would this apply to CNI's work in Bigsby then? Under that definition of being? Um, well, sure. I mean, what Cherokee Nation Industries is going to, it's going to, it's going to comply because now they are a, uh, you know, with the definition of G, they, they fall under the, the auspices of this act. Okay. Thank you. Uh, O's uh, uh, <coughs> common definition. P is a common <coughs> definition. Q is a common definition. Uh, would you want to try that turn on R? Would it be the? Uh, we have a policy of changing member to citizen in all, on all our acts. Uh, would you want to change tribal member to tribal citizen? Do I hear a motion? I like the motion. Do I hear a second? So. So motion made by Councilwoman Fishing Hawk and seconded by Councilman Garvin. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you for that recommendation, Mr. Hembree. Okay. S is a common definition. Uh, T, Terrell staff shall mean employees assigned to the Terrell office by the executive branch of the Church of Nation. I think that's, that's pretty standard in and of its own right. That would conclude the definitions. Is there any definitions in there that uh, uh, we would need to add? And I guess this is kind of directed towards John or anything else that you would want to change in that portion of the, of the act. I had a question because it's been brought. Go ahead, Councilman. Uh, I had a question just for, just for clarification. Uh, and I know this has probably been answered before, but I'm going to ask it again. Is Cherokee citizen a preference on getting jobs? Is it terrible job? Well, under the act, it currently is, it is not. No, uh, it's not. Yeah. But later on, there's an amendment right. proposed for okay. Cherokee preference first, then all other Indians, and then everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll need to vote on that okay. later. And, and the other question that I have is, I don't know, maybe Todd can answer too, that uh, here's the Cherokee Nation. Is that a policy? Is Cherokee citizen the Turkey sits in the uh, preference, even through our HR services over here. Uh, I'm going to assume that it is. Now, you know what? Assume, you know, can, can do to you. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Uh, it, it'd be a volunteer. Uh, it'd be. A, it'd be a policy. It'd be a volunteer. A volunteer policy. If it, if it is. Uh, I just can't think that. Can anyone shut some light on that? I'm just assuming that it is. Yeah. Uh, from what I understand it is, and they even have a preference inside the Cherokee Nation where you have to be employed with the Cherokee Nation before you can apply for that job. Okay, I didn't know and that. And that was okay. to upgrade jobs, from what I understand. Yeah, the the in-house of hiring. Whoever works for the Cherokee Nation has the first preference yes. for that job. Yes. Yeah, that is, yes. So there's internal hires mm -hmm. get preference mm -hmm. first before it goes external. Yeah. And then 
if it get one of those external, it is Cherokee citizens, or the tribal the members. But I understand the internal those. preference would still have it's Cherokee still Indian so preference right. first before we would get into it. So it's layered that way. Yes, Council. Well, it be like that in the casino? It is. There, the policy is that already. It, it, it sh the policy is there. Now, if it's not implemented See? properly, that needs to go through the appropriate chain of command with their human, with their their management and human resources, and it would be investigated individually because that would be a case by case basis. But the policy is in place for that. So this is going to be addressed later on. Did it, did it yeah, it's section okay. ten. It's okay. about the fifth page, I believe. Oh, okay. All right, thank you. I have a question, and, and this is not for action today, but I'd like um, somebody to volunteer to investigate what it would mean to make Taro a commission, an independent commission, rather than uh, part of the administration, mm -hmm. and bring that back in the, in a month. Me and Harley. No way. I'm not waiting. <laughs> Councilwoman Fishing Hawk, would you work with um, Mr. Hembry to bring that back for consideration? Mr. Hembry, I will be your partner in this. Thank you, ma'am. And it, just the specifics we'll need is potential staffing and budget implications and, and like what the legislation would look like too at next month's meeting. I would, you know, not going into much detail, I, I would uh, uh, think it would closely mirror that of the election commission as, you know, as the way the, the legislation would look. Uh, you know, appointed by the chief, approved by the council, you'd have, a, you know, you'd have to make a decision with three or five member commission. Uh, you could even think about staggering their terms if you so you wanted. But yeah, there, there's a, a whole number of things and, and I don't know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, we, I guess we'd have to also look at the uh, Carroll budget and see uh, if, if we would uh, mm -hmm. are we look at that in there. Are we looking at this from the same point, making it a standalone kind of regulatory arm? Well, that, that would be my understanding if okay. we want to change it from a, uh, from a, uh, if you want to take it from out under the executive branch, that's the way it would be. Okay. So if at all possible, we'd like a full proposal presented to this subcommittee at our next meeting. Which will which will be in a month, and I'll, I'll recommend a time that we can all concur on at the end. Okay. So I think we're on section five. Section five. Um, uh, establish authority and duties. Um, uh, there was a proposed amendment that you know the, the, there is hereby recognized the tribal employment rights office here and after uh, referred to as TARO. The TARO shall administer the employment rights program of the Cherokee Nation in accordance with this title. Uh, the tarot shall, and we struck out having the authority. It's just, it's, it's Mr. Henry, is that actually struck, or do we need a motion to stricken that? That is, it. that was a proposed amendment. Uh, all everything you see here are proposed. There's been no votes taken. So do I hear a motion? I don't know who had. I mean, it's. Uh, um, I make the motion. Second. And I make the motion. Did we make the motion, or want to take out all the twos? Time? Yeah, yeah, then yeah, to make it dramatic, dramatically correct. Yeah. So, the, so the motion by Councilman Fishing Hawk is to strike have the authority as well as the twos on A through um, X. I think some of them don't have the twos, but any of anything under the section five would eliminate the twos, and it was seconded by Councilman Thornton, and we have a comment by Councilman Baker. No, the twos was my comment. Okay. And the reasoning behind that, I think, was something that had to do with shall, the legal mm -hmm. term of shall. Well, the, the, the reasoning is, is that uh, the tarot the tarot shall. Okay, that is a mandatory language. That these are these are the things that tarot must do. Now, that's different than tarot shall have the authority. And so, you know, that that might be even a caveat that well, you have the authority to do it, but you don't you're not required to do it. So therefore, that's, I think that was the, yeah. the reasoning on, on. Okay. Is there any other comments or concerns or questions about this motion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. <coughs> the motion passes unanimously. I believe we're on item A under section five. Item A is no change from the current law. Uh, <coughs> actually, that's a you know with. I guess in the 
uh, in, in, in uh, interest of time, uh, do you want me just to you want me to go through e each one, or do you want me to uh, just go to the ones that there have been proposed amendments to? Well, on A, it, I think it should read the Tarot shall adopt EEOC guidelines or other requirements, right? Because otherwise, if it's May, then yes. Let, let's John. read A. Tarot. Uh, hold on. One of John had a call. All EEOC guidelines may not pertain to us. We may not be able to be enforced. It doesn't say that you have to adopt all. It just says that you will have EEOC guidelines. Does somebody else? Maybe that needs to read differently. Or does the first shall already uh, indicate that they have to act on EEOC stuff? Okay, let's read it. The tarot shall operate consistent with the provision of this title and to develop rules and regulations governing activities of tarot. The tarot may adopt EEOC guidelines or may adopt other requirements to eliminate employment barriers unique to Indians in Indian countries. Well, is it necessary to even say EEOC guidelines or other requirements? Can say the tarot uh, shall adopt uh, uh, guidelines, guidelines, yeah, gu guidelines or uh, requirements to eliminate employment barriers unique to Indian in Indian countries. Do I hear a motion to accept that language? Is that something the committee wants to do? I mean, what? I mean, you're the expert, John. I mean, that's well, <laughs> I'm not about the expert, but yeah, we already do the EEOC, gui EEOC, EEOC guidelines. Um, I mean, who's if we, do, we if we do shall, does it mean we have to include all EEOC guidelines, even if they don't pertain to the Cherokee Nation or may violate anything that we have? No, what, what the the suggestion is to uh, strike uh, the words. Uh, EEOC, uh, e e e EEOC guidelines or EEOC, uh, where we say Tarot shall adopt guidelines or other requirements. I think. To eliminate. I think on this, if we're going to get this to, to pass, we're going to have to present this to the EEOC anyway yeah. to to keep our EEOC funding and things like that. So I guess it's up to what what you guys think. I mean, the EEOC is going to look at this to pass it or not, just like they did when the, I mean when they first started here. So, what is the uh, wish of the committee? I got a question. Yes. Whatever happened to ideal of creating two different pieces of legislation? Remember, we at one time you all talked it about. It was talked about it. I mean, I. And did you? What was your decision? When did you come up with them? Oh, I, uh, well, I didn't make a decision. <laughs> but uh, they told me to. You know, I mean, my understanding was to go through with the act that we had. I mean, if, if that means, I don't think there was a definitive answer to divide it up into two different areas. One second. Uh, Councilman Fishingoff, could you clarify what you mean by separate? Do you mean just the EEOC separated out? Or how do you mean Tana, separate? Tyne would probably be able to explain it better because the lawyers was all talking. Well, at one time, I think we took. Uh, I'm yes, sorry. please. No. Okay. At one time, we talked about having a tarot law just concerning our funds, Cherokee Nation funds, that are not tied to a federal grant of some kind, and then having a different set of tarot rules if you were going to use federal money. I think that was what she's talking about. And we had talked about having two two types of law. One applied to our funds, that discretionary. Yeah, discretionary funds. One applied to federal funds. And so kind of we've kind of addressed that a little bit. Do you still see a, a need for that? Because we have to exclude, just based on Harley's comments, we would have to exclude some of those. But otherwise, if, if they don't have an exclusion on the federal dollars, we can treat them the same as discretionary funds, which would justify a second piece of legislation. Is that the way I heard it? I guess I guess my question would be to John. We certainly want to keep you in compliance with EEOC so you can continue their funding. And maybe we just should go through this and at any point where you think your funding may be jeopardized by what we're doing, bring that forth and we can each time decide whether that's something that we need to give or something that we possibly <coughs> might want to lean towards 
having our own set of laws for our discretionary funds versus the federal funds that the EEOC is going to be concerned with. So what I'm hearing is there's three separate classes. There's federal funds which are restricted. There's federal funds which would be the same as our tribal discretionary funds, which then would include tribal discretionary funds, and then there's tarot businesses. But I'm not clear that we necessarily, except for the federal funds that are restricted, that we have to treat anybody differently, maybe. I think you're probably correct. I, I, I think from my standpoint, on those discretionary funds that the tribe has generated, I want to be able to follow those funds all the way to the last pocket and it still be a Cherokee pocket. And federal funds, we cannot do that way. Federal funds, you can only go to a certain point and then, you know, you hope they do the right thing. But on discretionary funds, I truly believe that we could pass a law eventually that would follow that money all the way through to a Cherokee pocket. I think the ultimate thing that we are to be trying to arrive at here is that that money is going to that that final destination is it hit a Cherokee family somehow. So Councilwoman, before any is that more about the reporting and the recording of those dollars as it goes through? No. Or is it really about a difference in law? No, Chairman Watts, I really think that we're going to have to mandate at some point that our vendors and our sub-vendors recognize that we want Cherokees hired. Now, I know it's going to be over a period of time, and I know it's got to be done by implementation of percentages over years but we are going to have to force them to hire Cherokees. I mean, that's what it's going to come down to because it's more convenient for them to find somebody else at times. And I'm saying if you want the discretionary Cherokee Nation dollar, you're going to have to try harder. You're going to have to try your very best. Can, can we task one last thing to her and then I know mm -hmm. so can we task you with bringing that back either next month and it may it's probably going to take another month either how we strengthen this law to include that or how, if it's a separate piece of legislation that you'll bring that forward um, I could get with Todd I'm right we could down. possibly work on that okay and then I, Councilman Thornton's been okay. very patient I, I can tell you a couple ways just to just to kind of throw it out there uh, we can start with making our uh, our vendors uh, that get our contracts have all their subcontracts approved by Taro. And then they're going to try real hard to give to Taro vendors, sub-vendors, that are Cherokee or Indian at least. The other thing that we can start off right off the bat is tell them that they can only subcontract for no more than 50% of the dollars that, that's going on that contract. This is no different than what the state of Oklahoma requires their vendors to do. If you get a contract with them, you can't contract out, subcontract out more than 50% of it, and all your subcontracts have to be approved by whatever entity of the government you're working with. That's no different than what I'm suggesting here. And eventually that will assist John's group in making sure that charities are are either contracted with or hired. We bring those, I think that's later on in the sections, we bring those forward in writing for next month. Yeah, well, I'll get with Todd and we'll... And then Councilman Thornton's been very patient with both of us. Uh, I would like to see a definition on discretionary funds. Because when you're talking about discretionary funds, are you talking about the 30% that's paid to the Cherokee Nation? Are you talking about the uh, net, the, the uh, CME uh, provides to the company, which that is discretionary funds. And we have companies hired through CME that I believe are not Cherokee uh, contractors or vendors. And will that cover them also? Well, I guess you, you, you're talking about bottling up a large portion of funding that that is going to be hard to well, for, for
for seeing need to, the, to follow that guideline. I'm just in my way of thinking, Don or David. David, I'm sorry. That's all right. In I'm my way of thinking, David, all funds generated by C and E are, gen are discretionary funds. Okay. That that in my way of thinking, every dollar that they generate well, is all a those discretionary dollars, fund. All those dollars. Well, let's take Flint Coat Foods. All those dollars aren't going back in Cherokee pockets. I realize that. And, they, and it never will as far as Flint Coat is there. Well, so it those would are discretionary it, funds it, that's being paid to Flint Coat. It would if we tightened up a little bit on Flint Coat. They're going to take a lot. It, well, and that's what I'm If we're going to do this law and we're going to put some teeth in it, then let's make it tight enough that Flint Coat will hire our people. Mr. Yeah. Hembree, you may have that, but we can only deal with our budget here at the tribe. I mean, I think the other parts of the law address the other mm -hmm. items. But we can only talk, define yeah. discretionary funds yeah. as what happens within the tribal budget. Is that where we need think. to separate this? We're talking about having two different models? I, well, I don't believe that, that, for me, I mean, the discretionary fund definition would only be what we can do within our budget. 30%. And, and, well, that's not just the 30%. I mean, it's not just C&E. So well, it would I'm be any of our tribal tag revenue, any revenue of the tribe. Revenue and, yes. You know, these other yes. So that would have to be dealt with separately, but Ms. Councilman Thornton, I'm asking that you bring your amendment back with, and don't don't copy 20 pages just to have one amendment. Have a one page that notes the section and how it would be added and what that definition is being proposed for an official amendment or motion to be made in the meeting if possible. So if you're going to add a definition, it would be under that section and whatever letter it would be to be added. Is that and so Henry's nodding that he will work with you to get that done. Now whether it passes or not, I don't know, but we'll, we'll put them all forward to this body and then it would go through the respective process. So what we're working with Todd on is one, the definition of discretionary funding, and two, whether we even want two separate, two separate laws or whether there's a possibility that everything could go in here and maybe where it can only be federal funds, it'll fall under that one definition that's got except for federal funds in there because I think going back and thinking about when we talked about two separate <coughs> laws two separate sets of laws I think we tried to fix it with that definition I, I believe I really truly believe that that's what we did last time we did was I mean, that, that, that was the that discussion was because I had, I had recommended that that you not have two separate you know, I think that, that would be, you know, would, would tend to confuse the, the public out there. But we could have a caveat or, or a disclaimer section in here to say, you know, you know except for, you know, on, you know, when dealing with discretionary funds and then have a real good definition of what discretionary funds is in your act. I, I think that might take care of it. And then as far as incorporating some of these things that force these organizations that deal with us to make sure that dollar travels a little further down into an Indian's pocket. Uh, I'll get with Todd with your... Uh, no, I've asked, yeah. I'll get I believe Todd on those other two things. Has something, you have mm -hmm. something, and Mr. Thornton, Councilman mm -hmm. Thornton has something. Okay. Bring <coughs> forward next month. Yes, Mr. Uh, don't get me wrong. I, li I like the idea. But, you know, I don't know if the bit of it can be done. And David? You know, one thing that we might possibly think about is implementing it in a percentage basis over a period of time, That's right. just like we're talking about here. But I don't think we can ever go over, you know, get 100%. It, well, no. If it's we, not going to work that way. If we do these things that we're talking but about doing 50% only yeah. sub work on your contract and uh, all your subcontracts being approved by uh, John's office, the thing, if they're approved by John's office, what John can be saying is, well, heck, there was somebody right here on my list that could have done that very same contract. You know, let's back up here and think a minute or don't do this again. I mean, we're going to give him some ways to slap their hands pretty <coughs> harshly if they don't start making sure the dollar gets down to the Indian's pocket. I think we excuse me. Please go ahead. You know, I think we can go have a higher percentage of contractors and thinkers. You know, don't get me wrong. I, I think we've got people that are 
Cherokee that own companies and and people that are other tribes that own companies and vendors that have just give up on this and that's what we're here for and we've got people that's contracting that have contracted with the other four tribes which are you know Choctaw, Chickasaw, I'm not saying they're not the only tribes but and and they won't even try to contract with us and that, that's the reason we're here is try to increase those those uh, Cherokee uh, vendors and contractors to me and, and that's what I primarily you know, what I'm in here for is to get the higher Cherokees like you say and, and vendors and contractors but that's the people I'd sure like to see drawn in and, and we're, we're not doing it because they're we, I know Cherokee contractors that, that have contracted down in Texas uh, uh, in California and, and, uh, and for all the other tribes plus the Peoria and and I know people that that have run businesses like a, a, a casino business which would have been managers and they're doing it in other tribes and they're Cherokee and you know we need to attract those people to us because right now we've got people that are, are running our casinos that are from Arizona, California, uh, New York, and I, I can't understand why we don't, can't have our own people run our casinos. That's another thing that, that the reason that I'd like to see this uh, uh, Carol Laws strict strict. And, and I'm with you on the same page, but there's some of these things I can't see really happening. But we can put percentages in. Thank okay, you. several of us have another meeting at 12:30. Um, so I'd like to go ahead, and this is kind of a good place. We'll start again with Section Five, and I'd like to recommend at our next meeting. I'd like to recommend one o'clock on Monday, September 15th, when we're already here for other meetings, and uh, to continue this. Um, and we'll continue with Section 5, plus we'll have additional stuff brought forward uh, by the three council people that took ownership of those items. Very good, John. Second. Could I make an announcement? Yes, and uh, then we'll vote on the motion. I, uh, knowing that a lot of us would go to this next meeting, I did order us some just sandwich fixings, so I hope all of you all might stay and partake of our, our little meal that we'll have here in a minute. Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, all those in favor of adjourning? Aye. All those opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you very much.